Today, let us share the Word of God under the title, You Shall Have No Other Gods Before Me. Through this subject, let us take some time to understand why God gave us this commandment and why God gave us this as the first of the Ten Commandments. There are many religions in this world. People worship all kinds of gods. One religion worships a snake as their god. Another worships a fish as their god. Another worships the sun as their god. And another worships old trees as their gods. There are so many kinds of religions and so many gods on this earth. Then why should we worship and believe in God? If we don't understand the matter of our soul, we will end up only asking for blessings for our physical life. However, God gave us this life on earth as a layover on the way from our previous world to the eternal world in the future. We are standing in between the previous world we were in before we came to this world and the world that we have to go to after leaving this world. This is the kind of life which we are currently living. Then, what happened in our previous world that we had to come to this earth? The reason why we are living on this earth is to make preparations for the world we will go to. The Bible also teaches us that. However, since people don't know the spiritual world, they think that the best way to live on this earth is to enjoy their time, eating as they please, and living in comfort. That's why people ask their gods and their dead ancestors to help them make a lot of money. If their ways were actually right, everybody would be rich. However, that's not the case. Since they don't know about the soul, they're making meaningless idols and gods here and there. Actually, all of the 7 billion people in the world belong to religions. Whether they believe in an African god from an ancestral religion, or they live in a country that is considered a little more civilized and developed, even the people who say that they don't believe in any gods actually believe in a god. For instance, how do atheists react when they are told, go to hell? Are they happy to hear that? They get very upset. If they are atheists, they should ignore the world of hell and not believe in it, right? Why do they get upset? It's because they subconsciously believe in that world. Go to hell. This is a huge insult to them. And the reason why they accept it as a curse is because every soul subconsciously believes in the next world. Then, why did God tell us to have no other gods before Him? There are so many gods and religions in this world. But only which God can give us joy and happiness in the future? It is only God. That's why God said, You shall have no other gods before me. Other gods have no ability or power to give us happiness. It is only God that created the whole universe and operates it. Only God can provide a happy future for us. That's why God commanded us to have no other gods before Him. 
Also, only who can save the angels that sinned in heaven and were cast down to this earth? It is only God. No other gods have authority to give the forgiveness of sins to mankind. That's why God asked people again and again not to worship any other gods before Him, right? Then, today, let us take a look at some cases regarding God's commandments. God gave us this commandment for our own good and happiness. God gave His decrees, laws, and commandments to those who believe in Him so that those whose eyes are not open to the spiritual world yet can have their spiritual eyes opened through His commandment. We need to understand this. Let's take a look at Exodus chapter 20. Chapter 20, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. The teaching, you shall have no other gods before me, means do not worship other gods and do not fear other gods. Doesn't it? In Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments are declared. The first of the Ten Commandments is you shall have no other gods before me. If we could be happy by worshiping other gods, God would allow us to do so. However, they cannot bring us happiness. Sadly, the end result is eternal punishment. People don't know why they've come into this world. They misunderstand that they will receive some blessings if they depend on other gods, not on God. This is why so many religions have been made. However, God knows very well that no one other than Himself has authority to forgive the grievous sins that human beings committed in heaven. That's why God let us know that. Everybody, think about it. This small planet Earth is among so many stars in space. Earth makes no difference in space. Its existence has no meaning or influence. Even in our galaxy, there are so many stars bigger than the Earth. There are 200 billion stars in the galaxy that we belong to. When you simply hear the number, it is difficult to fathom. But imagine 200 billion stars scattered all around. It's beyond our imagination. How many people are there on the Earth? Seven billion. How many times greater is 200 billion than seven billion? If you think about it, 200 billion is not a small number at all. Moreover, there are so many stars bigger than the Earth in our galaxy. Even though such a small number of people on this small Earth in our galaxy give glory and praises to God, do you think it has any influence on the universe? It has no influence. The Bible says, God regards the things that happen on this earth as nothing. God regards it as meaningless. God regards it as something that happens on a speck of dust. It is not that God needs us, but actually, it is us that needs whom? We need God, because only God can forgive us of all the numerous sins that we committed in heaven. That's why we must seek God. Since we committed sins in heaven and came to this earth, only God has authority to forgive us of all our sins and transgressions. Only God can do that work. Therefore, what did God tell us? 
you shall have no other gods before me. Since human beings are ignorant of God, they go somewhere else to ask for blessings and to be comforted. However, they can never receive anything there. Let's continue to examine God's teaching, You shall have no other gods before me. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 20. Gather together and come. Assemble, you fugitives from the nations. Who are ignorant? Ignorant are those who carry about idols of wood, who pray to gods that cannot save. Their idols are not gods that can do harm or do good. Therefore, ignorant are those who pray to gods that cannot save. Verse 21. Declare what is to be, present it, let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who declared it from the distant past? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no God apart from me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none but me. Only who has power to save us? It says only God is a Savior, and there is no other. Because people are ignorant, they keep worshiping other gods and try to gain comfort and peace of mind by doing so. We are all in the flesh now. However, we were once heavenly angels. We sinned in heaven and were expelled to this earth. For us to be forgiven of all the sins that we committed in heaven, we absolutely need God's grace. We cannot go back to heaven unless God forgives us, can we? That's why in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 20 through 21, it is written that ignorant are those who pray to gods who cannot save. It means that salvation is found only in God, doesn't it? Let's see Hosea chapter 13, verse 4. But I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt. You shall acknowledge no God but me. No what? No Savior except me. God says, so many gods act as if they have power to give blessing or punishment. However, they don't have any kind of power at all. Only who can save us and control life and death, fortune and misfortune. Only God controls life and death, fortune and misfortune. However, ignorant people have made other gods, bow down to them, sacrifice to them, and worship them. God tells us, the heavenly people, that we must never be tempted to do that. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 2. The man who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. But the man who loves God is known by God. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, it says that there are many gods. There are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one. Who? God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. According to this verse, people worship many gods. Some worship an old tree. Some worship flowers, some worship a mountain, and some worship the sun. 
God told us not to fall into this kind of ignorance. God let us know that everyone's life and death, fortune and misfortune, are governed by God, not by other gods. For our salvation, for the happiness of our future, and to completely forgive all the sins we committed in our previous life in heaven, God commands us not to have any other gods before Him. Today, many people offer sacrifices on national holidays or on some special days. When they are asked, why do you offer sacrifices? They reply, to receive blessings. But blessings don't come that way. Who governs everyone's life and death, fortune and misfortune? God does. Let's confirm in the book of Deuteronomy that God governs life and death, fortune and misfortune. Let's see Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these, what? Blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. And the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The source of all blessings is in knowing God correctly, keeping God's words, serving God, and fearing God. It's not like an ancestral God comes to bless them when they worship an ancestral God or a demon. Then, to whom are all those sacrifices given? The Bible teaches us that all those sacrifices are given to demons, the devil. If we want to receive blessings, we must only worship God and give sacrifices to God, right? Let's see Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17. They sacrificed to whom? Demons, which are not God, gods they had not known, gods that recently appeared, gods your fathers did not fear. You deserted the rock who fathered you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. The Lord saw this and rejected them because He was angered by His sons and daughters. I will hide my face from them, He said, and see what their end will be. For they are a perverse generation, children who are unfaithful. When the prophet saw the pagans offering sacrifices, for whom were all those sacrifices for? They were offering sacrifices to demons. It means that the sacrifices were not given to God, doesn't it? And the same thing is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Today, people offer sacrifices to other gods, not to God. Believing that their gods, such as ancestral gods, will receive the sacrifices. However, in actuality, they are wrong. Let's see 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18. Consider the people of Israel. Do not those who eat the sacrifices participate in the altar? Do I mean that a sacrifice offered to an idol is anything? Or that an idol is anything? No. But the sacrifices of pagans are offered to whom? To demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. There are decrees, regulations, and laws that God established on this earth as a covenant in order to make atonement for all the sins and transgressions that mankind committed in heaven. God established the truth of the new covenant, saying, 
when you obey it, I will acknowledge that you've repented from your heart. All things can be given only through God. This is the law of the divine world and the order of the spiritual world where we will go in the future. However, human beings who are living in this three-dimensional world can't see it or understand it. That's why they worship visible things, such as the sun or trees or stones. They're committing such acts of foolishness now. Let's see what God thinks about worshiping other gods. In 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 35. When the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites, He commanded them, Do not do what? Do not worship any other gods or bow down to them. Serve them or sacrifice to them. But the Lord, who brought you up out of Egypt with mighty power and outstretched arm, is the one you must worship. To Him you shall bow down and to Him offer sacrifices. You must always be careful to keep the decrees and ordinances, the laws and commands He wrote for you. Do not worship other gods. Do not forget the covenant I have made with you and do not worship other gods. Rather, worship the Lord your God. God was worried that His children would fall into the everlasting furnace of hell. That's why He keeps emphasizing that we must not have other gods before Him as the first of the Ten Commandments. God didn't establish this commandment because He wanted to be served by humans. The reason why God gave us the first commandment is because that is the way to realize the salvation work which is only accomplished by God. In the book of 2 Kings as well, God says, Do not worship any other gods or bow down to them, serve them or sacrifice to them. God guides us to dwell in His eternal love by keeping the regulations, laws, and commandments written by God Himself. God gave us these words in 2 Kings chapter 17. Chapter 18 is related to chapter 17. What did King Hezekiah do to all the other gods he had been worshiping after realizing God's commandments through the Passover? He destroyed them all. A large-scale religious reformation took place. After that, God gave tremendous blessings to Israel. That is what is written in chapter 17 and 18. Some ask, isn't it okay to eat the food sacrificed to idols just a little bit on a national holiday? Each of us needs to be responsible for the salvation of our own soul. No one else is responsible for it. I'd like to deliver God's will. God clearly said, don't do it, don't eat it. All the children of Zion must know this. Let's see how King Hezekiah received blessings. Let's go to chapter 18, verse 3. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord just as his father David had done. He did what? He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made. For up to that time, the Israelites had been burning incense to it. It was called Nehushtan. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not cease to follow Him. He kept the commands the Lord had given Moses. And the Lord was with him. He was what? He was successful in whatever he undertook. The Bible clearly shows us that those who only trust in God and fear God will be successful as a result. 
Let's take a look at one more verse in 2 Chronicles chapter 28. Through the things that happened in the past, the Bible tells us that worshiping other gods provokes God to anger. God governs everyone's life and death, fortune and misfortune. Even if people go to another god and ask for blessings hundreds of times or thousands of times, they can never receive blessings. Let's see 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 22. In his time of trouble, King Ahaz became even more unfaithful to the Lord. He did what? He offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus who had defeated him. For he thought, since the gods of the kings of Aram have helped them, I will sacrifice to them so they will help me. But they were his what? His downfall and the downfall of all Israel. Everybody, Apostle Paul confessed his faith in Romans chapter 8. In any situation, whether we are happy or sad, joyful or troubled, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of Christ our Lord. We should also be able to say this, right? We ought to think of the eternal angelic world, where we used to be and where we will go. When we don't know what kind of faith we need to have and how we should live our life of faith, let's look to this teaching of God in the Bible. Let us not fail to fear God, serve God, and believe that everyone's life and death, fortune and misfortune depend on God and go toward the eternal kingdom of heaven. Let's see one more verse in Deuteronomy chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 13 reads, And to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good, to the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Yet the Lord set His affection on your forefathers and loved them, and He chose you, their descendants, above all the nations as it is today. God commanded us to observe His commands and decrees for our own good, for our future. Someone once said, our life today is a result of our life yesterday. Then, our life today is the moment to make a decision on what we want to be tomorrow. And our behavior today determines whether it will guide us to heaven or to hell tomorrow, right? Today, we need to understand through the teaching of the Bible that life and death, fortune and misfortune belong to God. No other God can govern, operate, or control life and death, fortune and misfortune. We must engrave this on our hearts once again. God gave us the decrees, regulations, and laws of the new covenant for our own good and for the glory of the kingdom of heaven. So, let us always regard God's laws and decrees as even more precious and follow God wherever God leads us and reach the kingdom of heaven. By doing that, let us preach the glory of Father and Mother all the more in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. By this, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much. God bless you.